looking for shelter among us. Who is the outcast? Who do we see amid the poor, the children of God? Good morning. Good to have you all here in this nice, warm, balmy Sunday. I feel like I'm back in Chicago. This is wonderful. No, it's not, actually. I got spoiled from last year, so let's turn it back to last year again, would you? Um, fill out your registration forms and put those in your offering plate, if you would. Uh, the church office and food pantry is closed tomorrow. We will be back to our normal hours come Tuesday. Please pick up your poinsettias if you ordered those. There's a bunch here, over there. If not, they will be discarded in a way that we so fit to discard. Special thank you to Kathy, who's here to sing this morning. We're looking forward to that, giving the choir a little bit of a break after working really hard these last couple of weeks, so we really appreciate it. And on behalf of the whole staff, um, Happy New Year. I hope this year brings a lot of uh, comfort and joy in your lives and uh, things... Um, go well for you. I know that uh, Dennis is looking forward to getting his wife home and feeling better, and I know that a lot of you have uh, had a lot of things that have gone on this last year. It's been an interesting year politics-wise and all that stuff, and so as we turn the page on a new year, it's an opportunity to start over again, right? Make out your New Year's resolutions. Be prepared to forget them by the third. <laughs> Let us uh, go to God as we worship him. Would you please stand for our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletins, please. A new day has dawned. A new year is about to begin. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. As we enter this new year with hope and excitement, O oh Lord, Remind us that you lead us. Lord, 
Remain standing for our first hymn. It is on page 246, Joy to the World. Please remain standing and join in our unison prayer. Continue, Lord, to make all things new, even us. We move into a new year with fears about the future. Give us faith that we might venture into the new year led by you. And that we will give you all we need faithfully to serve you and courageously to follow you where you lead us. Bless your church, we pray. Set today amid new challenges and new threats. Give us what we need to meet the challenges and enable us not to be intimidated by the threats. Inspire all preachers with a fresh sense of power and the urgency of your gospel. Fill each of your congregations with renewed vitality for the tasks that are set before them. Help us so that we are bold to pray, wisdom, grace, and courage equal to the assignments that you will give us during the coming year. Help us to have half as much faith in ourselves and our discipline as you have placed in us by calling us to be your disciples. Amen. Please be seated, and we invite the young people to come up with Jane.
How are all my little friends this morning? Look at you, look, oh my goodness, you are ready for the new year, aren't you? You're celebrating already, good for you. Well, kids, look at this book. Do you know what this is? What's, what's it called? Bible. Bible, good for you. You know, I have a friend of mine who said she was in somebody's house one day and she saw a book on their table and it said Mechanics Bible. Well, that's interesting. I always thought the Bible was just for us for this. But this is called a Holy Bible and Bible means instruction book or authoritative. So holy means that holy is how we're supposed to live our life. And this is an instruction book of how we are supposed to lead our lives, right? So the story that I'm going to tell you today, or the lesson I'm going to tell you today, really is based on Ecclesiastes. And if we read what it says in Ecclesiastes, it says here, why was this book written? And it says, Ecclesiastes is the fourth book of poems and wisdom in the Bible. Ecclesiastes means teacher. The person who wrote this book is called the teacher. Some people think King Solomon wrote this book. He loved God very much. He was a wise teacher. Do you know who gave Solomon his wisdom? Do you know who gave it to God. him? Yes, God did. And do you know that King Solomon actually asked for that as a gift? And to this day, King Solomon was the wisest man there ever was on the earth. So if he's the wisest man, maybe we should learn and listen to what he says. And if we read the Holy Bible, it will lead us how to live a good life, right? A holy life. Okay, so in this book, there is a line, and are you a good reader? Pretty good? Will you read it with me? No? Would you read it with me? We'll read it together. So in here, this is Ecclesiastes 8, okay, and it says 7. And it says, let's read it together. No one knows what lies ahead. So who can tell a person what's going to happen? So King Solomon said this. He, he was the wise man. He said, we don't know what's going to happen. But there is one who does. Do you know who that is? It's God. God is the one. So with that in mind, I'm going to make this a little bit easier for you to understand. Okay, so I have two calendars here. Okay? Now, what year is that? Do you know? 2017. 2017. That was this last year. And look at, <laughs> look at, look at my calendar here. Is there a lot? Is there a lot in my calendar? Do I have a lot marked down in my calendar? Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. Is there a lot in there? Yeah. A lot of plans, a lot of things, a lot of appointments, right? But you know what? This doesn't matter anymore. It's all gone. Could throw it away. It doesn't everything that happened before is all gone. It doesn't matter. It's done. I mean, I might look back for memories or something, but it's gone. Done. 2017 is gone. But now, look at this. What year is this? What year does that say? Do you know? What year does that say? What does that say, Madeline? What year is that? 2018. 2018. Yeah. That's right. That starts tomorrow. Oopsie. And look at, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Look at my calendar. It's clean. Nothing on there. I don't, I might put a few appointments in there, but it starts out clean. There is nothing on there. But now I can put something here in December that I know is coming up, right? Sometimes we have birthday parties to go to. We can talk about next Christmas. There's things coming up. But you know what? We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, do we? Tomorrow is a clean slate. You might know it's tomorrow because it's November. The, it's uh, January 1st, right? Yeah. In January. In January, so it's next January, year. It's the month of my brother's birthday. Your brother's birthday is in January. That's right. We have things that are coming up. But we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But you know what? God said that's okay. You don't have to. He does. And so the Bible says, since no man knows the future, 
Who can tell him what is to come? We can put appointments on here from now on to December, but the only day that we can be sure of is today. Right? Today is the only day that we can be sure of. Some people become worried and frightened because they can't be sure of the future. But we don't need to worry because even though we don't know what the future holds, we know who holds the future. The future is in God's hands. So we can rest easy, right, in the plans that he has made for us. We can't be sure of tomorrow, but we can be today. So we need to try and live as God planned it for us in the holiest of lives that we possibly can, right? Yes, a holy life. That's what he planned for us, and that's what we are to be for today. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us today. Help us to live it the way you have planned it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, I believe you're going to children's church, right? Good Christmas.
Would you join me in prayer? Loving God, as we come here on this New Year's Eve day, we set aside that which has been, and we look ahead. Sometimes, oh God, it is difficult to do that because we, we, we tend to harbor and, and hang on to those things that are in the past. We, we hold grudges. We, we, we keep record of wrongs. We, we hold people accountable for those slights that have come in our lives. And so it is difficult as humans, oh God, because of just the way we are. You know us. To set aside those things and look ahead. And yet, oh God, you have called us to do that this day. As we enter in this new year, oh God, we ask that you would help us to move forward. Move ahead with a renewed faith in your love and your grace. To look to the future and to see with brightness and, and with hope and excitement and anticipation of the things that you would have in store for us, in our lives, in our families, in our workplaces, and in our church. As you work in and amongst us with, through your Holy Spirit this coming year, we ask, O oh God, that you would be with us, amongst us, and that you would enter into our lives each day to remind us of how good you are, how wonderful you are, how rich is your grace and your love and your forgiveness. And then to share that with this world that we live in. Those dark places that need to see the light. To those places of anger and, and, and malice to see your peace. Those places of fear and mistrust to know your hope. Be with us, O oh God, as we make our way. Be with those that are in our hearts this morning who need your love and healing and touch. And we give you praise and thanksgiving for the year that has passed and the year that is to come. These are prayers we now lift up to you in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As the ushers come forward, and as we prepare to give our offering, I ask you to join me in prayer. Holy God, we marvel at your love and your faithfulness. At the right time, your son Jesus lived amongst us and invited us to call you our heavenly father. Because of his obedience, you have adopted us into your beloved family. And we are grateful that you have brought us through the challenging times in the past. And as we look forward to a new year, send your spirit to help us to trust that you will continue to guide us. Let our gifts and offerings be pleasing in your sight. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
please remain standing for our middle hymn. It is on page 250. It is Once in Royal David City. The choir sang this last week. Which service? What, evening? Evening or morning? morning? Morning. Thank you. Sing along. Please be seated. This morning's scripture is from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and 19 through 26. In the Pew Bible, it can be found on page 672 and on page 1281 in the large print version. I will be reading from the King James Version. Please hear Jeremiah as he speaks to us through his lamentations. I am the man that hath seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He hath led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me he is turned. He turneth his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin hath made old. He hath broken my bones. He hath builded against me and compassed me with gall and travail. He hath set me in dark places as they may be dead of old. Remembering mine afflictions and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord 
is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I will have hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. This is the word of the God for the people of God.
Kathy has a regular gig on Sunday mornings as a cantor at a Roman Catholic church, and so we like to steal her away from time to time, and I appreciate you doing that to get her over here. But I'm sure they're blessed as well on Sunday mornings with you. So thank you for sharing. Maranatha, which is come Lord Jesus, is what it means. So um, Jeremiah is kind of dark and, and um, kind of down during Lamentations. I mean, even the word itself is to lament. And, but I, I, it strikes me to hear on this, uh, this eve of a new year that, that, that uh, Jeremiah just kind of strikes a different chord. All of a sudden, he kind of comes to the realization that despite everything that's going on in his life, despite all of the circumstances, there is this moment of enlightenment where he reminds himself that every morning is a chance to start over again with God. He says, because of the God's love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Two moments in my life that will give you kind of an insight about who I am and maybe my odd sense of humor that sometimes you will see from time to time. I have nearly died twice in my life. When I was five years old, I contracted meningitis, which is a disease that attacks your spinal cord fluids and your brain stem. And I had a 104 temperature at one time at uh, Methodist Hospital in Peoria. And I was, I was sick. I mean, I was really sick. And the doctors were concerned. This was back in 1968, you know, the dark ages of medicine. They still did leeches and bloodletting. Well, maybe not. But it was, it was a tough time period. And I remember distinctly my parents. Um, you can always tell when, when parents are concerned about you. Usually, you know, when you go and you fall off a swing set and break your arm, it's always like, you know, you're fine. They had this really strange look about them. They were very somber and concerned. I was in the hospital for many, many years, and, or many, many years, no, many, many days. It seemed like years. But the one thing I remember is that the only way that they can really determine, at least back then, if you have meningitis or not, is a spinal tap. I don't know if you've ever been through a spinal tap before. I have sat and watched my wife go through two different births. But the spinal tap was a it, I still remember the pain. It, they numb your back, but then they stick this needle about this long. It, it literally is this long, because they have to get into your spine. And you know when it's in there. You can feel it, and they drain some of your spinal fluids. I was sick. And then, when I was in seventh grade, my family and I got to go to Boca Raton, Florida, which is a beautiful place. It's on the west coast, east coast just north of Miami. And this, uh, one of the guys in the church there in the Quad Cities owned a condo, and so we got to go. And we spent the day one day out swimming on the beach. No, I didn't get almost attacked by a shark. That would have been a cooler story. It wasn't that fun. I would rather tell that story than what this one is. And we had, you know, we had spent the whole day. We were all sunburned, of course, because, you know, coming from Illinois in the middle of January, you just want to get out and burn yourself. That's the thing to do. We went back to the condo, and there was a, a pool, and we went swimming, and, and I kind of managed to put myself into the, to the deep end, and I was a pretty good swimmer, but for some reason that day, I had, had been playing all day in the, in the beach and the water, and, and I nearly drowned. I was saved only because somebody along the side of the, it wasn't any of my family, I think they all left. I think they saw me drowning and thought, well, this is a good opportunity. <laughs> See, you need, to know my, you need to know my humor because... Listen, I've almost been dead twice. So nothing is as serious as that, okay? If it wasn't for a, some bystander, I don't even know who the guy was, never will, that pulled me out of the water, I would not be here today. Now, some of you may have experiences like that. But I think about that when I think about this opportunity here to turn the page on a new year. Every day I wake up, I remind myself that this is a new day and a new opportunity. As Jane was telling
telling the kids earlier, to start over, to start afresh. This is what boggles my mind, steals my breath, and still drives me to my knees every day. And it is because of God's compassion and his love poured out through Jesus Christ, born just a week ago, that he showers his ongoing, never-ending, overflowing kindness and love on a daily basis. I mess up on Monday. We beg for Tuesday and forgiveness. You make the same mistake on Wednesday. You plead for his mercy, mercy on Thursday. You stumble again. You ask for his grace. Does this sound familiar? Over and over again, all of us in this room, and people that we work with, and people we go to school with, and people that are in our families, and, and everybody that we rub elbows with at Walmart and Deerberg's and, and all those places that you spend your week with, they're in the same boat as all of us. They mess up, they screw up, and they make mistakes. All of us do. And yet, without his mercy, I would be a wretched wreck of a human being. I don't know about you. Without his mercy, I would have little hope. And so do you have hope. Jeremiah is here to remind us as we move into this new year that in Christ, Lord will be faith to us, faithful to us each morning, even though even sometimes we aren't faithful to ourselves. That there is enough mercy to get us through the day, through the troubles, through the sin, through the pain, through the sorrow, through the suffering. No matter whatever it is we face, there will be enough of God and his love and his mercy to see us through. If you ever sat down and wrote the book, read the book of Lamentations, you, you need to make sure you're prepared for it because it's, it's kind of dark and it's kind of, it's kind of full of pain and misery. And it's about the consequences of living a sinful, in a sinful and a broken world. And yet, breaking through is this one moment that Jeremiah has where the gospel hope points to the sufficient, powerful, present, and faithful caring for each child that belongs to God. God's love and compassion are new each morning. David Tripp, who writes in his gospel devotional, New Morning Mercies, says, Many people wake up each morning trapped in their own weakness. But by grace, we wake up to the rescuing and redeeming strength of the Almighty. Every day, each day, year, even each moment, allows all of us in this room the opportunity to start afresh. Now, as I said in my prayer a few minutes ago, all of us in this room have those moments in which we would like to, you know, think to ourselves that we're better than everybody else, and therefore we can pass down judgment, right? We can say to ourselves, well, I'm better than that person in zero, therefore I'm going to harbor my grudge against him, or I'm going to hold my you know, I'm going to hold them accountable for that. Something that's, you know, even beyond and beyond what we think we should live our lives about. All of us do it. I'll be the first to confess it. But each moment is an opportunity for us to turn the page on that and become a new child of God. That's incredible. Our culture that we live in is a consumer society, isn't it? I mean, everything is disposable. Heavens, I get a new phone every two years. Can you think about that? I remember growing up, I had one phone, it was on the wall, and it had a dial on it. And when you wanted to call somebody, you did this, you know? Or if you, went, if you were out on the road and you needed to call somebody, you had to look for something that I don't even know if exists anymore called a pay phone. You had to put quarters in the thing. And even when I was growing up, we had a, a party line. We've talked about that amongst some of the people here that work at the church. Where you would, if it was one ring, it was ours. If it was two rings, it was ours. No, no. <laughs> but you'd pick it up anyway. <laughs> there was always that one person who knew everything that was going on because they could listen with your phone conversation. 
Everything is disposable. Our food, our, our clothing, everything that we have is disposable. We use things. And worse yet, we use people. We cast them to the side like they are just the same as everything else. Not God's faithfulness. His grace and his love is unending. Sometimes we go to bed at nights full of regrets, failures, mistakes. We come to the end of them and we remind ourselves of the year that has passed and we wonder what we did or what we said. But then we get a fresh start each morning. Not just a new year, each and every day. Because of God's steadfast love poured out through Jesus Christ on a cross, his arms are open wide for even you today. Whatever it is that you felt like occurred in your life this past year, set it aside. Let it go. I learned a long time ago when I was five years old and, and nearly dead that there are so many things more important than holding on to that which we have no control over or can do anything about. The Lord is my portion, therefore I will hope in him. God's enduring love and mercies are not only new every morning, but they're new every moment. Think about that, my beloved, as you take time to abide with him this week. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, great is your faithfulness. Your compassions, they fail not. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. We embrace your unfailing love for us, especially how that love was demonstrated towards us on the Calvary's cross, where your beloved Son gave his life as a ransom for our transgressions. He bore our sins upon his own body so that we could be restored to a right relationship with you and being comforted under the blanket of your mercy. As we come to this new year, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit and cause us to walk triumphantly in the steadfastness of your love. You are our portion and our hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand as we sing our last hymn together? It is on page 251, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
Eternal God, by the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, your Savior, gave yourself to the world. Grant that being born in our hearts, you may save us from our sins, restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen.